Hi, I'm Zach with HKN, and um, today we're going to continue going through Maxwell's equations. Um, last week we did Gauss's law, which is the first of Maxwell's equations. This week we're going to do the second one, which is also called Gauss's law, but it's for magnetic fields. So, um, just a brief recap. Last week we decided that the flux through a any any surface the electric flux through any surface was equal to the um, charge enclosed in it divided by a constant called the um, permittivity of free space I believe so so this week we have a similar looking equation and we're gonna go through what that means so this is the differential form of Gauss's magnetic field law and um, and this side looks the same as it did for electric fields. What does this mean? Again, this is the divergence of the magnetic field at, and this is defined for a point in space, and it's a scalar, uh, scalar quantity. So this tells us the tendency of the field, the vector field B, which is how we express magnetic field, it tells us the tendency of that field at any point to move out or in of that point. And we can see that according to this law, that's equal to zero. And that's interesting, we'll see what that implies later. But um, this form is the most, uh, you know, the shortest form, but it's a little bit hard to visualize. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna integrate both sides of this over a uh, three-dimensional volume. And um, you can double check this in your multivariable calculus book, but what that results in is a surface integral of the magnetic field. Um, and we take the dot product with the differential area as we integrate over the surface. And um, this side, zero, integrated over volume is equal to zero. So this is the integral form of Gauss's magnetic field law. Okay. So what does this mean? It means if we have a shape and we have um, magnetic fields flowing you know, in different directions for whatever reason, and we take um, all of the differential areas along the surface, all the and we take the dot product of the magnetic field with those differential areas and then we sum those all up around the surface, the, the result is going to be zero. That means there's just as much magnetic field leaving any surface as there is going into it. So let's think about what the source of magnetic field of a magnetic field would be. So typically we see a, um, a magnet, right? see if we can where we have a north pole and a south pole and we define magnetic field lines as um, flowing out of the north pole and into the south pole so in a dipole magnet like this our field lines would look like that and their direction would be like that. So, so what Gauss's law is saying is that no matter what shape we draw around this, um, the, the flux through that, the, the surface of that shape is zero. So um, let's think about what that sort of implies. So, so last week we said that the the flux through any surface of an electric field was dependent on the charge enclosed by that space. In this case, we're saying it's zero. So that kind of implies what it sounds like. There there is no such thing as magnetic charge. Um, as far as we know, every every north magnetic pole is always accompanied by a south magnetic pole, no matter how small of a of a magnetic particle 
you have. So, um, let's see. Um, really, that's all there is to it. We could go, so we'll take this image here and we'll draw a couple different shapes around it. Let's see. So we could draw, we could draw this shape, a box. So imagine this being three dimensional. And we could see that all of the field lines flowing. So we have some field lines flowing out here and some of them flow back in and then some flow out down here and they flow back in. And if we did the math, if we did this integral over this surface, it would amount to zero. Um, some people might say, well, let's redraw the box so that it cuts through the middle of the magnet. Okay, pretend that this top part isn't here. I don't feel like erasing it, but let's draw it through the center of that magnet. Um, and oh yeah, um, we kind of changed our situation here. We have a lot of field lines coming in at this top part and not quite as many leaving at the bottom. But what, what actually happens is that these field lines here, they loop and they continue through the center of this magnet. So if we take into account all the field lines inside that magnet, the law is still preserved. All those field lines are flowing out of this top surface. So um, various other places on YouTube, you might see um, people that have little contraptions that um, claim to be magnetic monopoles, which is, which is what a magnetic charge would be. It would be just a North Pole or just a South Pole. Um, but we we can pretty much know that those you know those videos will be some trick or another because if they're in fact uh, magnetic monopoles this would not hold in physics as we know it would not change um i guess it's not completely ruled out this law just exists because no one's actually ever found a, a true magnetic monopole um if you want to spend time doing it you're all but guaranteed to win a nobel prize for physics because that would be an uh, incredible um invention. So thank you very much. We'll see you next week. We're going to do something called Faraday's Law next week. And so far, if we think about the two laws we've done, they've been electro and magnetostatics, which means we haven't dealt with um, time at all. The next two laws deal with um, changes in vector fields over time, and it, we'll see really interesting links between magnetic and electric fields. So, that's that. Thank you.